Right, so here we are today. Um, this is going to be more of an instructional video, really. Um, just to explain the gear I'm using, I'm using a 4,000 size um, Shimano Sustain, and there's a link to the review of that reel uh, on the channel. Um, I'm using a Century HPR. Um, you can see this one there, it's 7 foot 7, 5 to 28 grams, and cut and up to 2 PE line. Um, I tend to pre-make all my traces um, because it's a lot easier for me. Um, these traces are approximately, oh there you go, you can see how long they are. Um, I have a tiny um, swivel there with breaking strain of about 40, 40 pounds. Uh, a 12 gram egg shaped lead. I don't bother with cone shaped leads purely from the point of view. I think they're quite expensive for what they are and these are cheapest chips. Um, then a bead and then I tend to use 99% of the time a size 1 uh, Snowby um, bass worm hook, something like that. They've discontinued them unfortunately but they're ridiculously strong. Um, all of mine as you may or may not be able to see are barbless. That's for two reasons. Firstly it's for uh, the fish's safety. Uh, so it just unslips the hook nice and easily and also when I'm rigging a soft plastic um, it comes out, it doesn't tend to tear the plastic uh, when I'm changing lures. So what I'm going to use today, let's just have a look. I haven't done a new um, what's in my bass video uh, bag video for a long time so I might do another one of those again soon. We'll start off with one of these. So these are Big Bites. Uh, super swimming jerk minnows in real shad. They're four inches long. Um, there's some of them I've got in here that, uh, as you can see, possibly by by that one, um, all the tooth marks in it, so they, they do catch. But we'll we'll push the boat out. We'll use a new one. Ooh. Let's get that put away. So quite a dark one, this one. Um, so obviously there's the, the way they're poured, sometimes they should be, that's the colour they should be, sorry, that's the colour they should be, um, but this one's turned out a little bit dark. So if I just pull that up to about there then you'll see it better. So we go in through the nose to about there, slide the bait all the way along, up the hook to there, see where the uh, hook is going to come out, roughly with your finger. Poke it through, and then you'll see it coming out there. So there we go. So virtually weedless. Obviously, um, you can do that, and it, it will become weedless. And as soon as the fish bites, um, because it's got a slot in the belly, it exposes the hook, and theoretically we catch. All right, just need to try and untangle myself. Right. So the, the mark we're fishing today. I've not fished it before. Um, doing this primarily just for um, for the video's sake. So we'll see what it's like um, with regards to drag. That's really tight. Yeah. Maybe a touch too tight. Okay. So as I said, not fished here before, so let's just... Look, for the way I cast, that's a long cast for me. So the lures hit the bottom straight away. I'm lifting the rod up back down, taking any slack line straight away, so I'm literally bouncing this from rock to rock, letting it stop, winding in any slack, and I'm feeling it bounce over the stones, which hopefully it will continue to do until we get a fish, or it gets snagged. Um, this is one of the downsides to this kind of fishing. You're fishing in rocks, so it is a tackle hungry game. And this is one of the reasons why I use those uh, pre made traces. So if I do get snagged, it's literally just one knot and I'm back in business. Let's see if we can get to this rock at the end here and see what we can do. And ideally not get wet boots. So my landing net, as you see, I, I use this as a as a walking stick, uh, as a third arm, um, even though it's a bit old and knackered now. 
So, uh, one of the things I didn't mention earlier on with regards to uh, the traces that I use, because the swivel is so small, the lead will pass over it. So if a fish does break me off, as you'll see, the lead will just come straight off the swivel. Um, but in all the years I've been wrasse fishing, uh, I've never had one do that yet, so I'm quite confident of not leaving a, uh, a hook and trace in a fish. So let's see what we can do. Some of the shads you can get, once I've had a couple of fish on them, their noses can get torn. Um, and the easiest thing is just to bite the nose off the lure. And Karen using it, it makes no difference. So there's more weed out here, I can feel it. So a slightly different place to where we fished earlier on. So as you can see by the rod tip, I'm just bouncing it from rock to rock. And usually it's a matter of just finding what the fish actually want to take on the day. Now they might not want these shads. Um, I have fished this area from a boat, but I've never fished it from, uh, from the shore. So, so as, as you can see, so that's uh, one with the, the nose bitten off. Uh, the hook's protruding quite a bit here. Um, mainly because I've used the lure so much and it's caught me quite a few fish this one um, so yeah there's, I don't know what well you can see the, the tooth marks on it all along there so yeah they, you know, they do work they work very well um, so let's see what we can do now so let it get to the bottom uh, always a really really useful tip when you're closing the bow I'm always close it manually rather than wind the handle. Um, it saves an awful lot of strain uh, on the internals of the reel. Uh, that's a tip I've picked up from Tackle Advisor on, on YouTube. And he keeps on stripping down reels and finding issues with them. And just by looking at the sky up there, it's gonna rain in a minute. So I'm also gonna have a bit of a change of lure now. So this is this advantage of barbless hooks that you can just take, take your soft plastic off straight away and it doesn't tear it up at all. So everyone, excuse the noise there, everyone has their favourite soft plastics. Um, these uh, shads that were mentioned earlier on, the big bite ones, are one of my favourites. Um, but sometimes it's not what they're after. So, this is my other favourite. So this is the Waveman 3.5 inch Tiki Grabbing Christmas tree. Unfortunately we stopped making these which is a real shame because these are a killer lure. Um, so much so the last time me and a friend went fishing I took, he didn't want his broken ones so I took them all home, glued them all back together and in effect I've made myself a complete new packet of them. So that was good. <laughs> right. So rigging up a, a grub, exactly the same as we did with the, um, with the shad. So in the nose and out like that. Slide it all the way along over that part of the hook. Decide where it's going to go through. Go through. There we go. So it's now weedless like that. Quite often my casts are underarm. I don't know whether it's called pitching or flipping. I don't care. It, it works for me because I'm not usually casting very far. That's usually plenty distance cast. Uh, excuse if there's lots of wind noise, but that's how the wind is at the moment. It's going to ruin my day's bass fishing that I put in four months of time. When you're fishing like this, and fishing lures like this, if you're not feeling the bottom with each um, drop of your lure, you're not fishing in the right place. If you're just getting continually smooth, that means your lure is in mid-water or you're fishing over sand. And even if you're fishing over sand, you, you still feel the lure dig in very slightly on the sand. 
but yeah well this is telling me like on the stage now that I haven't had a bite yet or anything even though you can turn that way away from the wing no interest even that's enough to suggest to me that there's no fish on that side I haven't had any interest in a fish within about half a dozen casts and a change of lure well, that's usually enough to make me decide mm, okay time to move So yet again, the technique for this sink and draw fishing, which is pretty much what, with what I'm doing now, I'm lifting the lure up and I'll feel it bounce down. You can feel this all through the braid, even when the braid's not tight, you can still feel this. What I'm going to try now is a tube, there's a zoom tube. So in the States, tubes are used to imitate a, a crawl, so that's what they're, they're like, so they, they, the ends flutter. So rigging's very similar, so you just go in with the nose and out, go all the way up to the eye, not where you're going to come through. And that's how we text us with them. I'm going to skin it slightly so it's completely readless. So all I'm doing now is two twitches. So the lure is hopping like that and stopping. 